Hello, this is Jim and Mika from Quark, and uh, we're here today to show you how to use Kelvin to measure the slope on your Cinco. First of all, the Cinco is, a, is the power meter that measures torque and RPM. And to measure torque, it uses strain gauges that measures the, the torque between the chain ring and the crank arm. Torque is measured in Newton meters, which is the amount of force that's on the pedal times the length of the crank arm. In order to calibrate the slope, we're going to hang a known weight from the crank arm and then take a measurement from the Cinco. The slope is, if you go back to high school algebra, is y equals mx plus b. Uh, in this case, m is the slope or it's the response, how much the, uh, the Cinco needs to take its internal measurement. It's going to multiply by the slope to get an engineering unit like Newton meters. Uh, we'll go through the uh, calibration steps with Calvin and then talk a little bit about what you need. First of all, you know the length of the crank arm because it's usually marked on the inside of the crank arm. In this case, 172.5 millimeters. Uh, that would be a typical measurement. Then the other thing that you need is you need a, a known weight. Now, dumbbells that you'd get at the gym are very bad as a, as in terms of a weight. Uh, we have a 50-pound dumbbell here that we went and got measured at the Postal Service and UPS, and it was 2% difference. It was basically 51.1 pounds. Uh, so if you have a dumbbell, you need to go get it weighed somewhere, and it appears that a UPS uh, or a, a U.S. Postal Service typical mailing scale uh, is sufficient. We uh, took it and measured it and got 0.2% accuracy using their scales. The other way to go is to get a calibrated weight such as this one. Um, this is a 20 kilogram weight that we bought from McMaster Car. And if you go to our website, we've got the part number available so that you can buy this exact weight. And this is 20 kilograms plus or minus two grams. So that's uh, plenty sufficient for what we're doing. In general, you want the weight to be, have 10 times the accuracy for all, in, in general, when you're measuring things in engineering, you want your measurement device to have 10 times the accuracy of what you're trying to calibrate. So in this case, if you want your power in a meter to be within plus or minus 2%, you want to make sure that your, the length of the crank arm and the weight that you're using to test is at 0.2% or better with accuracy. So we'll step through the, the parts of Calvin now that's required to, to do this slope calculation and measurement. So this is Calvin. Here we can search for a Cinco, which will scan the environment. Of course, we have many Cincos in the area, so we won't touch that button uh, here. But we're going to enter the Cinco ID directly. The Cinco ID can be found under the battery lid uh, in, and underneath the battery. In this case, it's 4888. So say OK. And then search for that. And now we'll find the Cinco, and we can see the device ID is found and the watts and the cadence. And if I pedal backwards a few times, we should see some cadence, so 60 or 40 RPM. So now we're connected up. Now we can also, just to show you, set the zero from here. And so that'll take a zero offset measurement. In this case, we're uh, minus 266, so that's okay. Very good. Now we have a chance to go in and modify the slope. Now remember the... Uh, the zero offset is just the measurement of how much torque it's measuring when there's no force applied. The slope is how much the Cinco is going to respond to its internal torque measurement. So those are two different things. When you calibrate at the beginning of the ride, you're setting the zero offset, or what the zero point of the Cinco is. Uh, in the Y equals MS plus B, that's the B part. In this case, uh, we're going to set the M, or the slope. There's a couple ways to do that. Uh, when you go in here and look, the uh, current slope is 9.04, and the factory slope is also 9.04, since we haven't changed it. So we can adjust the slope, which lets us go in and move the slope up or down by 1%. We can enter the slope, which lets us actually type in this new slope amount if you know what, it, what you're after. Uh, for instance, if you change chain rings, you calibrate it, you know what a slope is, and you put those chain rings back on, you can just come in here and punch in the slope again. In this case, we'll cancel. And then, of course, you can reset the slope, um, which will reset the current slope to the factory slope. 
in this case it's the same. And then of course we've got calibrate slope, which we'll show you now. Now calibrate slope is going to allow us to go through and apply a weight uh, to, the, uh, to the pedal and actually calculate what the slope should be. So in this case, we'll, we'll step through here. These crank arms are 172.5, so we'll change that here. 172.5, so we're done with that. And then this is a 20 kilogram weight. So we'll put that in here, although it was defaulted anyway. So that's 20 kilograms, and that's our weight. Now, we'll notice here, if we look on the weight, we've actually got the clip that's on here that adds weight. And so I'll show you how we take care of that. Now we'll get an assistant here uh, to, to go through the next step. So we're gonna hit continue. And now it's gonna explain what we're going to do. We need to take a measurement with no load on it. And then we're gonna take four uh, test measurements with the weight hanging from the left or right crank arm and the different chain rings. So we'll begin. The first thing we're gonna do is take a reading with no measurement. So we'll hang on to this. Now what we'll do, the applied weight that we're going to test with is 20 kilograms. That's right here. So we don't know how much this weighs. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and we'll hang that on there and take our zero measurement with that hanging. So if you have a dumbbell or something else, some other known weight, but you have a, a bit of chain or something that you don't know the weight of, you can go ahead and leave that on there during the first measurement. So we've got that. We've got the uh, reading here with it hanging, with that, uh, the, just the clip hanging on there. So we'll take that reading. Now what we're going to do, it's asking us to put it in the little chain ring with the, in this case, it's a grayed out, so the rear crank arm, the back crank arm. And the reason we're going to do this is we're going to do it with the right and left crank arm forward in both the big and little chain ring. And that'll, there's many strain, gauge, strain gauges on the, the power meter. And what we want to do is we want to load all those gauges in the different care, uh, configurations that they're going to be loaded as you ride, since you ride with both feet and in the big and little rings. We want to take our, our calibration measurements using all those, all those locations. If you have a single speed, like you're usually going to be using both right and left crank arms, but you don't have to use the big and little chain ring. You can just take two measurements in your single front chain ring. So here we go. The easy way to do this with our weight is do the clip here and then get that sticking up. And of course, we, the graphic is showing us the little chain ring on the non-drive side crank. So we're going to do that. And what you can do is just clip this under here and then go ahead and just roll the bike back a little bit and do that until the cranks are level. And this is where an assistant helps because if you're holding onto the bike, you can use the brakes and all to hold that, but you need to make sure that the crank arms are very level. Um, you, it's, you could use a level or, or some other measurement device, but you can actually eyeball this pretty well. Uh, your, your eyes are usually pretty good at judging whether things are parallel or not. And that's typically sufficient, although it is a source of error if the cranks are at the wrong angle. So in this case, Mika, can you take a look? Are we straight? Can we go to the front? Yep. Okay. So there we're on there. The bike is upright and vertical. I'm going to hold still, and we're going to take a reading. And now it's going to ask us for the little chain ring, but on the other side. So we'll just roll the bike forward a little bit flip it around, come over to here, hook underneath, and we can just kind of tip. Are we level? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll take a reading. All right. Set that down. Now it's go to the big chain ring. So we'll go ahead and shift and go up here. And then return back to the back crank arm. Flip it underneath. Just like that. Keep it from wiggling. Okay. Go ahead. You can hit it. So we'll take that reading. Okay. Set that down. Is 
just like that. Okay, we'll take that final reading. So those are our four measurements. Now we're going to go back and re-verify our zero offset again. So we'll take the clip out and hang it on here. So now we're basically at no weight. Well, almost no weight. We do have the clip on there. And we're going to go back and, and retake this zero offset reading again. And so now we're finishing the calibration. And now we have our results. So in this case, our old slope was 9.05, and now our new slope is 9.31. And so that's the, the, the difference between what we had before and what we measured now using this. And we want to keep that, so we're going to say accept. Now, when you accept this, you have an opportunity to send the calibration data to Quark, uh, which would let us help you debug uh, if you're having trouble and that'll, that'll just send all your measurement results to us. You don't have to do that. You can if you'd like. In this case, we'll just say no. And now it'll set the slope. Okay, and now we have our new slope, our current slope, 9.3, and our old factory slope of 9.04. So that's a summary of how to set your slope with Calvin. I hope you've been enjoyed our time together today and enjoy your next ride. <laughs>